So the topic that we're going to take a look at is managing CRM and databases uh, through the COVID-19 crisis and I suppose just generally within our uh, businesses. So it is really um, important, this is a really important topic and actually um, the continued success of our businesses really depends on how we manage uh, our CRM and databases. So we're going to take a look now at the kind of content that we're going to cover over the next hour or so. We're going to begin at looking at the data that is key to collect for revenue generation. We're going to look at how to map sales channel and end customer data. We're going to look just briefly at, at what it's meant by GDP or compliant data. Uh, I'll move on then and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at why we would bother to collect data, what are the benefits of that and the importance of collating clean data. Uh, we'll take a look at some CRM and database management solutions um, and I'm aware that people listening will be in different kinds of business, businesses, some, per, some businesses may be just, you know, one person managing a small business, or we may have, you know, large accommodation providers with big chains. Um, so we're going to look at different kinds of systems, everything from a basic Excel to a really sophisticated system. Um, we look at uh, what's important to manage in relation to database management during uh, the uh, crisis like we're living through at the moment, the COVID-19 period, and what is priority and we'll just touch on then how we use data for effective communications. Uh, so with no further ado then we'll move on and take a look at the data that is key for revenue generation and if you only take one thing from what we're going to say over the next hour I'd ask you to listen to the upcoming slides because this is really important. So first of all what is CRM? CRM is simply means customer relationship management. So what is a CRM supposed to do? Well, it's, it's meant to help us manage our existing customers, identify and develop new customers. And the green, bar, the green circle on this screen is really important. It's designed to help us drive profitability. In other words, make sure there's rev to maximize the revenue on the books. So when we're tracking revenue, revenue what, is, what is useful to track? There are two really important components for tracking. The first is the sales channel. All businesses should understand where their business comes from, where their revenue comes from. Now their revenue can come from two different sales channel types. The first type is a direct sales channel. So this is something like your website. This is basically a channel that allows a customer to book directly with your business. The second sales channel type is called an indirect sales channel. And in this case, the customer is coming via another business or another platform to book your business. So an example of an indirect sales channel would be something like a tour operator or an online travel agent. So we would need to know in for our total revenue generation, which sales channel are, compromise, are, are contributing to our overall revenue generation. We also need to track data relating to the end customer. This is really important. So our sales channel del delivers customers. Some of those customers will have the opportunity to become repeat and some of them will not. And we'll take a, a look in a while um, at how we might gather that different data uh, based on, on the end customer's potential to become repeat or not later. No matter uh, whether our customer has the opportunity to become repeat or not, it is very important to know uh, where that customer originates from. So let's just say they come from the island of Ireland. It would be really important to know what county they come from, uh, or if they're a global customer, maybe what country they come from. So this is really important because it gives us very rich information for understanding what is contributing to the business revenue generation. So when we're taking a look, as I said, at, total, um, at our total revenue generation, a business should be able to say where 100% of its revenue comes from. 
So let's just say I'm a business and I've made 1,000 euro or 10,000 pounds or 100,000 pounds. I should be able to say that 25% of that came from tour operator, 25% from my own direct website, 5% from direct referrals, 15% from repeat customers uh, who booked directly, 10% from corporate and 20% from online travel agents. If I, if I record my revenue and my data accurately, I will have this kind of information. And this is really um, important for a business to know. And I really do need to emphasize the importance of recording sales channels because uh, we all you know, know the effects of our last recession. And after that recession, I worked with, or towards the end of it, uh, especially accommodation providers that had failed are almost failed. Now, when you looked at uh, as a result of the recession, and they may have been doing wonderfully well in advance of the recession, when you looked at the books of these businesses that had failed or almost failed, the reason behind that is that they had over relied on one channel or one market. So let's just say the business over relied on its own website and the domestic market the recession happens and the rug is pulled under out of that uh, revenue opportunity. So I would really advise businesses when they're looking at their revenue generation to see if diverse sales channels are contributing to that because that will mean that your revenue generation model is more stable. And if it's not currently looking like it's stable, then think about um, how you could make it more stable for the future by bringing in new sales channels, markets, and customer types. So I always need to know of 100% of my revenue in my business, what sales channels direct and indirect contributed to that. Similarly, for my end customers. So of course, the end customer comes via a direct or an indirect sales channel. I, I need to know if these customers come, for example, from the local market, or from you know, uh, uh, the, the rest, uh, uh, any other Northern Ireland county or Republic of Ireland county, whether they come from a global market, maybe the Great Britain market or the French, French market is really important to me. I would need to track that. My end customers, I really need to understand the ones who have the potential to become repeat. And those customers, I actually put into a separate box of data. They're really important to my business. Um, I think about them a little bit like a family or a club. So they need to be especially minded to their data because I can draw upon that data when I need it to, cause, uh, to generate bookings for my business. I also need to know how the end customer chooses to book, if that is via a direct sales channel or an indirect sales channel. So if we categorize our data to give us this kind of information, then we really have the Lego blocks for understanding where our revenue has come from in the past and how we can build further opportunities for revenue generation in the future. So let's take a look now at what we need to track in terms of sales channel data and the end customer data. So let's just say we've got a sales channel like a corporate customer. So it could be uh, Hewlett Packard or a tour operator. Let's call them tour operator ABC. So that is one lead, one business. Um, but I need to know all of the associated contacts in that lead. So let's just say I have a great relationship with Mary Byrne in Hewlett Packard. I would need to find other bookers in Hewlett Packard to create other business opportunities, revenue generation opportunities for my tourism business. I therefore need to uh, collect and mine the data for each individual booker in that sales channel. Like I said earlier, the end customer then, for the end customer, I need to think about which customers have the potential to become repeat, in which case I'm going to need more detailed data, and which customers do I simply need to record where they come from, like their county or their country. So we'll look at that again in, in, in a few minutes. So let's look now at how, so do, do keep in mind the importance of recording the sales channel data and the end customer data. And we're going to flesh these areas out a little bit more now. So let's look at mapping reservations and booking data. 
So let's just say this is a 100 bedroom hotel in a central location. And this is the revenue generation model, this triangle that this, uh, that this uh, business has built. So the bottom of this model, this business looks for a bread and butter uh, uh, business, say through a tour series or corporate individual bookers. It builds that out with group business, so special interest groups or corporate incentive leisure ad hoc groups. And at the top of that triangle, it gets bookings from the leisure individual market. And these uh, customers book, say, through the business website or through an online travel agent. So it's useful to think about what kind of a model we have for our business. And you can see that this business has a lot of different sales channels, customer types, and even markets working within its triangle. Here we see an example of a revenue generation model for an attraction. And in this case, it's bread and butter revenue is also coming from the likes of, say, tourist series, but also high repeat uh, business, say, from language schools or societies. Um, it could be schools or educations or scouts, whatever, whatever the regular bread and butter base would contribute here. Again, this business builds out its model through groups and it fills it out with leisure individual, the leisure individual market. So now think about all of the sales channels, customer types and markets going on within this triangle and how can a business clearly map the data uh, so that it becomes meaningful to it. Well, a really good way to do this is via um, what's known as a profile tree. Okay, so you can see an example of a profile tree here on the right. So I would suggest that if a business is looking to invest in a CRM system, uh, that they sit down and work out their profile tree on paper first. Okay, so let's just say for this business, um, the master profile is the reservation system itself. So this tells me the total revenue that has been made by this business in one annual year. Um, and let's just say I can see that the revenue is £1,000 or £10,000 or £100,000. But I'm going to need to break down that revenue more so that I can see um, the exact components of where that revenue came from. This is why for this particular business, I've created a profile tree based firstly on segment. So now my £100,000 or my £10,000 revenue, I start to gather the data based on whether it's a leisure individual customer, a business individual customer, or a group customer. So now my £10,000, I might be able to tell you £3,000 came from the leisure individual market, £2,000 came from the business individual market, and the balance came from groups. I'm starting to get a clearer picture of where my revenue is coming from. So I, I, let's think about this further. If I break it down again, I go to sub-segments. So a business really needs to decide how they label um, uh, each little box of data that they collect. So in this business, let's take a look at the box here directly under leisure individual entitled sub segment. So they've noted their individuals. For this business, this defines a leisure customer who books direct or a family booking or a wedding booking or an FIT booking, meaning in this case, a booking that has come via a tour operator to the business. Then we move on again, drill down further into booking types. So this business has defined three booking types, a direct booking, i.e. a booking that comes via direct sales channel like my website, an agent booking, i.e. a booking that comes from an indirect sales channel like my tour operator or online travel agent, and a promotional booking. So uh, this business happens to do promotions through, you know, e-zines or Facebook, and they've put in a, a revenue box to identify this because this is important to them. We drill down further and go into booking method. So I record how the customer books. In this business, they've recorded these as online bookings. So booking via the website or email booking or voice booking, in other words, someone who picked up the phone or a booking that came through an agent or through a CRO or central reservation office. And finally, I take a look at the booking source. So booking source simply means, how did you hear about the business? And here in this business, the categories they've decided on are, say, text, an e-zine, 
uh, WOM, meaning word of mouth, somebody referred the business to them, uh, or a repeat customer. So a leisure individual repeat customer. So now you can see uh, across my three segments here, leisure individual, business individual, and group, that if I record my data in this way, I'll be able to drill down uh, to get a clearer picture on my revenue. For example, under the segment leisure individual, I'll be able to tell you the total amount of revenue that came through the leisure individual segment. But I will also be able to tell you how many of the people from uh, customers from the leisure individual segment booked direct uh, through the website uh, because they heard of us through, for example, an e-zine. I'll be able to drill down to get much further, much clearer information. And this information is really important to guide my business um, into the success or not of campaigns or into opportunities for the future. So a profile tree. Let's just say it's a business that's got a lot less going on in its, um, in its uh, triangle, like we saw uh, earlier. Well, my profile tree will look a little simpler. So let's just say this profile tree is for a business that doesn't engage in business individuals. So it has literally uh, split its revenue into two boxes, leisure individuals and leisure groups, and it has decided its sub-segments in the same way. So I'll show you later how you can translate this kind of thinking into a simple Excel sheet, okay? But uh, I hope you're getting the idea that from the 100% of the revenue our business achieves, we need to be able to drill down um, to see um, greater detail that informs our business about maximizing revenue generation opportunities through the data. So let's take a look now at mapping sales channel data. So on the profile tree, we see how to map overall data across all of our reservations. Now we're gonna drill into sales channel data. So on the slide to the right here, you can see uh, a company called Tour Operator. Um, so let's just say within my reservation system, I've got a master profile called Tour Operator. Now under that profile, I've got lots of different uh, tour operator business hooked onto the tour operator master profile. I could have a most master profile called corporate businesses. And then all of my individual corporate businesses are hooked on to that master profile. So if I'm doing it this way, a business will be able to say um, of 100% of my revenue, 25% came via tour operator because it'll be all of the tour operators will be linked back to the master profile tour operator. Okay, but I want to drill down further. Let's just say I've got uh, 10 tour operators in my business and I get a lot of business from tour operator ABC or corporate company ABC. This particular company has lots of different addresses around the world and I've got a great relationship with them. So in my reservation system, I record the location of each one of those offices and their associated address and contact details. I also link the bookers names in each address to, uh, to the correct um, uh, address profile. So you can see here in the middle, tour operator ABC London, and to that address, I have linked John Timmon, Grace Boyd, Marie Tyrrell, and Marie Joyce. So let's just say I can see then, uh, when a booking comes through from tour operator ABC, I will link the booking, let's say, to John Timmon from the London address. And I can therefore see all of the bookings that John Timmon brings to my business. Uh, the same goes for Grace and Marie. Let's just say that Marie Tyrrell has told me that Marie Joyce works in this company, but guess what? The data shows me that Marie Joyce is not booking with me. Well, this represents an opportunity. I need to pick up the phone to Marie Joyce and said, Marie, uh, uh, Grace Boyd let me know that I should contact you because we're already doing a lot of work together. So I want to let you know that I'm available to help you. 
So in this way, we're using an existing lead within a company via one booker to grow a new lead via another booker. And this is really important for revenue generation because it is much easier to grow leads via an existing lead than to excavate business via a new lead. So we need to make sure that we are maximizing opportunities via the leads that have already been, uh, that are already activated for our businesses. So do you see here we're taking more detailed data about the sales channel to identify um, revenue generation and new opportunities. So let's take a look now at end customer data. So this is a really important uh, part of data collection. So like I said earlier, the, sale, the end customer comes via sales channel. They come via direct sales channel like my website or an indirect sales channel, say like the online travel agent. Um, now, when the customer arrives to me, uh, for all end customers, I need to um, record in my uh, booking system uh, their country of origin. So if they're German or Great Britain or Irish. Uh, if it's a market that is massively important to me, I might need to record a little bit more detailed data, like if they're Irish, I'll, I'll want to know their county, or maybe if they're uh, from the Great Britain market, I might want to know their area as well, so Bristol or Birmingham, so I can start to build out opportunities in the Great Britain market. Let's just say for me, France isn't, I'm not going to build it out in detail. In that case, I just need to take the country of origin, okay? For End customers who have the potential to become repeat, these are the gold dust customers for a business because they become an important collection of data in their own right. For those customers, I need to take more details. For example, I might need to know their name, their address, a telephone and an email address. I'll definitely need to know where they come from, what county. I'll need to know their country. Depending on the relation, what my business is and the relationship that I have with my customers, I may even take details like their wedding anniversary or their birth date uh, or preferences that they like spa treatments or golf treatments or an afternoon tea, that kind of thing. Uh, because the more details I take in that regard, the more targeted a communication I can ultimately send to that customer then. So the end customer goal dust data, especially for the repeat customers. So I find with tourism businesses, they can sometimes flay when collecting data for end customers because they feel they have to collect detailed data for all customers. So I hear a lot from tourism businesses, look, my manager or my owner has asked me to increase the easing database by 10,000 or 5,000 people. But this is not a games number. On our database, we want to maintain customers who truly have the potential uh, to become a repeat. We want to speak to people who are directly a match for our business. So it is better to have really qualified leads on our database who are a match rather than multiple leads who are never going to engage with us, okay? So let's take a look at three different customer opportunities here. The first one is a, a, a German customer and they come via a tour operator. The reality is when they attract, check into my accommodation provider or my visitor attraction, I don't really need to take their end data because firstly, uh, they are a customer who books through a tour operator. Uh, I got the big booking through the tour operator, so I need to be respectful of that. And anyway, it's unlikely that this customer maybe will book directly again. So in this case, I'm just going to record the nationality of the customer in my reservation system, Germany. The second customer here I have happens to be from Antrim and the business knows because when they checked in that this is a customer with no repeat potential. So the business is going to record how they booked. We always do this, the sales channel, in this case, the website. We're going to record the county, Antrim, because we want to know this because it's domestic data, which is important to us. And we'll record the nationality as Northern Ireland or Ireland. My last guess in, my, in this example comes from County Meath. Now they booked through an online travel agent. And uh, as I was speaking to them when they were checking out, I realized that they loved the stay in my accommodation provider or the experience in my visitor attraction. So I'm gonna be interested in encouraging this. And I've also established that they have the opportunity, they, they will have reasons to come back again. In this case, I encourage this uh, through a good conversation with this customer, 
uh, to become part of my repeat customer database. So I take their details, um, I record their uh, county, and I record the, the country of origin. So in these three different scenarios, I'm only taking detailed data for the customer from County Meath. And this is really important, uh, especially in dealing in hotels that could have very busy um, front desks that we, we make them understand, we enable them to understand the customers uh, uh, that for which we need the more detailed data. Okay. So then I often find with tourism businesses that they're reluctant to collect data because they're afraid of making an error with GDPR compliance. So we all know in our recent history, there was a big focus put on GDPR compliant data. But the reality is that whole focus uh, really didn't change a lot. Tourism businesses and all businesses were always supposed to be responsible with customer data collection. Uh, the, the legislation just really emphasized that and the, really, uh, the recent communications really emphasized that. So it's just really important when we do collect data and keeping in mind the end customer, the repeat customer for which we want, for whom we want more detailed data, um, the most important thing is that customer consciously opts in. So we're not trying to hoodwink them into becoming part of our database. So literally, John, delighted to hear that you would a lovely stay. Uh, listen, we do, uh, and delighted to hear you'll be coming back to this area again. We do lovely um, offers for time to time, or we have lovely updates about what's going on in the area. Would you be willing to you know, join our database? So we keep you up to date on that. And then John, consciously opts in and becomes part of our database on that basis. The other really important uh, point of GDPR compliant data is that there's an onus on the business to keep that data safe. Uh, so if we're keeping data, for example, on an Excel sheet, we would need to make sure that that's password controlled. So we need to make sure that customer's data is safe. And sure, don't we all want that? So that's really important. We also need to be aware that if a customer asks us to remove them from our database, that we do that. And uh, so all the time we're showing respect uh, towards the customers and we are in the business of hospitality. So this is really important in our industry. Uh, so we make it clear how they can opt out of communications. Um, and if they ask to be what's called the right to be forgotten. So for their data to be removed, that we enable uh, that. We enable that. That's also called anonymizing customers. We anonymize uh, the data that that's not necessary to keep for our business. Okay, so again, I'll just reiterate there that we take great care about collating data for repeat, uh, for repeat customers. And this is all about matching our repeat customers. We want them to be, uh, think about these customers a bit like our family or our club. They are part of our tribe. They like what we're doing and they want to hear about this. this is, these are the kind of customers we want to communicate with. So just to draw your attention to the uh, link at the bottom of the slide here, this is where you can find more uh, information on GDPR compliance through the Tourism Northern Ireland uh, site. So all of the information that we discussed there earlier, the profile tree, the gathering of the sales channel data or the end customer data, we can see how this pulls through onto a reservation screen. So this is a reservation screen for a hotel. And you can see all of the fields here enable me to collect the data for my end customer. Um, and if I take a look at my next slide here, uh, you will see that I can record the um, end customer data. I can record the channel via which the customer booked. And I can also require, uh, record the marketing information like the method or the booking source or the segment like we said there earlier. So that is why I've been involved in a lot of CRM and uh, booking reservation systems installations. I wouldn't think, you know, and often they can be costly. I wouldn't think to invest in one of those before I would work out on paper what I need that system to map for me first. So that's really important. And in my past, I find that profile tree really useful for that. So let's take a look at uh, why we would bother collecting uh, accurate data. Uh, and, and I know some of you out there are probably thinking, you know, data collection is one of the more tedious subjects, you know, that we can imagine within commercial roles and tourism businesses. Um, but it is actually the most crucial because through data collection, uh, we get to identify revenue opportunities and losses. 
we get to communicate with existing and potential customers, and we get to measure inputs versus outcomes. Okay, so let's take a look at that now. If we are recording data, like I said to you, in the way I said to you there earlier, we'll be able to his, uh, assess historic and future performance. So let's just assume this is a normal year and I'm comparing 2019 with 2018. I'll be able to see in January 2019, the revenue, uh, where my revenue came from via which sales channel, and to, um, to uh, compare that versus the same month or the same quarter or the same year in the previous year. Really importantly, I'll be able to take a look ahead at future performance. So for tourism and businesses, it's really important that we don't sell in the now for the now, but we're all the time looking ahead. So good rule of thumb is that we're all the time looking ahead, say at least four quarters out, three quarters out, two quarters out, one quarter out within the quarter, within the upcoming three months, two months, one month, and then the, the weeks and days um, into, into the present. So I constantly look ahead at future performance, and in that way, I get a sense of the sales channels uh, that are, are booking in, in my business future. And I will be able to see if those bookings are ahead or behind of the same period last year. And I'll be able to determine earlier if I need to put solutions in place to drive revenue for a future period at an earlier stage. So well-managed data and recording of data enables me to do that. Uh, like I said there earlier, recording uh, where our business comes from and this data is crucially important uh, for stable revenue generation. So I got a call this week uh, from a business that told me that they've put, they have relied 100%, it's a small business, on online travel agents uh, for their revenue generation. And at the moment, they do not have future bookings from this channel on the books for when they say open in July and August. So I would urge businesses, when you keep that kind of feedback in your mind, is that every month, once a month, you take a look at where your revenue is coming from and, and objectively assess, is it stable? Do we have diverse markets here, local, domestic, global? Do we have diverse sales channels here, direct and indirect, if your business is large enough to take them? Because the more stable our revenue is, the more uh, options we have to draw upon during a difficult period like we're going through at the moment or post a period like we've lived through in the recession. It will enable me to identify opportunities. So for example, if I'm recording uh, the county from my end customers, I'll be clearly able to see, guess what? My business is getting opportunities, revenue customers from Fermanagh and Tyrone, but not from Antrim. That flags to me that maybe I can do something to, to generate revenue from that county. Maybe my business is telling me I'm getting tour series bookings by a tour operator, but guess what? They never think of me for ad hoc or FIT bookings. I could switch on that opportunity. Uh, the data will tell me I'm getting business from Great Britain and Germany. I'm doing really well. I'm into a great revenue flow from my revenue generation. Maybe I need to look at a new market like France. Okay, so it really gives us the clues as to where we're to go. It gives us the road map. Um, it allows me to bring my end customers together, the ones who have the opportunity in particular to become repeat. Like we said earlier, we think about those as a family or club. They become a sales channel in their own right now. So tours and businesses that, you know, uh, that have collated this kind of data in the past are reaching out to their family and club to create opportunities for themselves in July and, and August for when tours and businesses um, are opening again across the island. Now let's take a look here. It allows me to assess input versus outcomes. So let's just say I do a targeted campaign, I don't know, via, uh, you know, in a certain demographic, in a certain area via, I don't know, easy marketing or Facebook or other campaigns. Well, I should be able to track the outcome of that so that it is recorded in my data. So I invest 50 pounds. I should be able to see that I've gotten back whatever it is, 150 pounds or 5,000 pounds from that investment based on a targeting targeted campaign. 
So if you take a look at the box there on the top left, this is really important to me. Um, I'm, I'm hoping in your heads you're not thinking that data management is tedious because without it, we do not have the Lego blocks for revenue generation. We are totally working in the blind. And this is something that we need to avoid as tourism businesses. So it is important to say that clean data in means clean data out. So uh, there's an onus upon our businesses to make sure that the data we collect is, is correct, uh, that if we are individually managing that data, that we make sure that it is well managed. I can think of a small business uh, that is managing its data through a simple Excel sheet, and they are phenomenal at understanding where their bookings come from. Uh, in large organizations like large hotels, uh, well, uh, it's really important to inform reservation teams and sales and marketing commercial teams, and really importantly, our front desks. It's really important to provide training for them on how to, to ask for and collect clean data and the importance of that role um, in providing a revenue generation roadmap for the business. So the data we get out is only as good as the data we put in. And this is really important so we get an accurate picture of our wins and losses and our opportunities. And so that we end up with the tools to care for our family, our clubs, so as we say, our tribe, the end customers who um, will, will book us repeatedly. So I saw based on the questions that were sent in from uh, Tourism Northern Ireland that some of the businesses were interested in different kinds of systems. So let's take a look at that now. And we'll start looking at a very simple uh, Excel sheet. So if you take a look at the Excel sheet that I've just drawn up for this presentation, you will see that this business has divided, so it's a small business, clearly a large, say, hotel group or a large visitor attraction couldn't manage their bookings on an Excel sheet. And this may work very well for a smaller business, but it is really important to understand for all businesses, no matter how large or small you are, that all CRMs are really computerized Excel sheets. They record data like little boxes in Excel sheets. And when we understand that, uh, we can often manage the CRM system better for our business. So in this business, I've got financial week one, which I've noted here as uh, 05 to 11 of January. Now take a look, I've got a booking date. I've written down, I've, I've mapped in from the profile tree I showed you earlier, some of the fields here. So source, I've written for the first booking on line two here, it's an email. The segment is group. The sub segment is tour series. The booking type is an agent. And on I go recording, the business name is Green Tours. The booker name is Jane. Uh, her second name is Coyle. And I've taken the booker's details, OK? Uh, and you'll see that I've done different bookings. Uh, line six there, a direct individual booking. So this is the first part of this Excel sheet. And it carries over to the next page here. So I've taken the booking details. Um, and if I keep going out here, you'll see that I've written the country of origin for the booking. Now, the first booking that I've taken here is actually a tour operator booking in line two. In line six, this is a direct booking from a company that I've named Tyrone Phones. So in terms of the bookings, I've already identified that my bookings on line two and line five have no repeat customer potential. So I'm just going to record their nationality, their country of origin. However, Tyrone phones, because of information they gave me um, uh, through the reservation process, um, I've been able to identify that they do have the opportunity to become repeat, okay? So in this case, I've noted uh, the area that they've come from, Birmingham, and the country as Great Britain. For my repeat customers, I would need to pull them from my booking data and create a separate Excel sheet with their data. So something like this. Um, you will see on this Excel sheet, on line two there, I have, um, I have pulled in my customer, um, uh, Jill Saunders, who booked through an OTA. And look at the note at the end here, booked two nights, February 2020, advised she will visit family four times per year, and she accepted to join the database. My aim is to convert this person into a direct customer. Now, I know a lot of you out there will be saying that it's very hard to, to, to convert OTAs into direct customers, um, but you might be interested to know that the OTAs don't mind if businesses uh, try to do this. Um, and a 
that tourism business needs to know how to ask the right question of the customer who books via the OTA uh, so that they'll ultimately end up booking via them. They need to collect that data. They need to have their email address so that maybe they can become part of the business um, e-zine database. My uh, customer in line three, well, that is John Stokes, who previously came from the booking Tyrone Phones. And my note here, he's on a two-year project for a local company, advised he will travel multiple times. And this really diligent reservation is to put in a note, he really likes our homemade shortcake. And if me, being a commercial person, saw a note like that, the reservation system, knowing the potential that this customer has, I'd be sure to leave a simple hospitality gesture, like a nice welcome plate with some shortcake in his room on his next door. Arrival. So you can see here, very simply done on an Excel sheet. There are more sophisticated systems. Um, uh, so these are some examples on this slide here. Uh, there are multiple CRMs and it's all about uh, matching what best suits the needs of your business. So Mind a Client is, a, is a, a CRM that has a lot of functionality. It also allows for uh, bookings of events and dates. Uh, so that may be of interest to some um, businesses that offer, say, workshops and, and that kind of thing. Zoho is another CRM that's used a lot in visitor attractions. Salesforce, you'll have heard about this CRM. It's a really famous one. Um, uh, that's available to businesses. It is also important to say that Salesforce has a not-for-profit solution. And what I mean by that is, if you're a not-for-profit business, Salesforce has a free solution for not-for-profit businesses. Um, and there are not-for-profit businesses in Ireland using that free service from Salesforce. So it would be a good idea to reach out and, and ask about that if you're in the non-for-profit area. And finally, we've got a system like Digital Alchemy. Uh, this is a phenomenally expensive system with incredible functionality functionality uh, that combines you know reservation CRM data pre and post marketing for customers it really is you know uh, the, the whole shebang but it also is a high cost investment so it's probably more suitable for a large hotel chain that could see a return on that investment so let's take a look now. We're coming up to the last uh, 20 minutes. So I'm going to take you through the next section and address some of the questions that were asked as part of this, and then we'll move to questions. What would I be prioritizing during this period? I would make sure to uh, clean any existing uh, data uh, to make sure that's really clear. I'd be looking for uh, customers in the domestic market who have the potential to become repeat. I'd be sending a lovely communication to say, look, we were delighted to have you in the past. We would love to welcome you back in the future. Remember, hospitality, we need this kindness to come through in the communications. Um, I would be looking to create, if I don't have a strong data management solution, uh, I'd, be, I'd be looking to put a robust system in place to record data for the future. Um, I'd be looking for data that gives me opportunities in the short to medium term, so revenue generation opportunities for local and domestic market. Um, and I would be assessing if the data I have collected for date to date shows that my revenue generation model is stable or if I need to make that more stable for the future by bringing in other counties, countries or sales channels or, or, or customer types. Okay. So just very briefly, before we go to communications, I can collect data, say for repeat customers, um, and that's an amazing tool, but the communication I send to that customer is really what's going to have them engaging and booking my company uh, or my business, tourism business. So to be aware, I am a human, as a tourism business, I'm a human writing a communication for another human, the end customer is going to read it. So anytime I create a communication, I actually think, what is the impact I'd like to have on the reader? Is it to touch them? Is it to inspire them? Is it to reassure them? Or maybe it's a couple of those things. And I objectively read the communication to determine if that is the impact that I will ultimately have uh, on my uh, end reader, on my say repeat customer. And you know, maybe sometimes I have to think in my head, jeepers, this might bore them. If that is the, um, if that's the reaction that comes into my head, I go back into the communication and revise that uh, to achieve the impact that I, I, I need to have. So to inspire my customers to want to be part of my family and club. 